it's going to get muddy probably quicker with spring rains. It's going to warm the fastest. Shallow, muddy water will always warm quicker than any other part of the lake. Most of the time, your big balls of bait fish are going to go to that area as well, the shallowest, warmest part of the water. So when the shad go that direction, the predatory and other fish fall, whether it be crappie or musky or bass or walleye saw guys. At that time, we're going to, most of your shallow the lakes are going to have a lot of guys who are going to be doing a little bit of casting and they'll be short line trolling. They're going to be running small baits up to big baits and they're going to be running leads from 10 foot off the rod tip back to say 20, 25 feet off the rod tip, running deep divers, shallow divers, and we're covering the top four foot of the water column above the bait fish or even covering shallower water adjacent to the bait fish where there's new and emerging weeds. That's where those fish are going to be at. But finding the bait in shallow water that warms the quickest in the spring is your best bet and the best starting point to have for yourself uh, when fishing an unfamiliar lake. Those fish will actually stay in that shallow or warmer end of the lake through the spawn, uh, which usually occurs weather pending and what the water temps get to anywhere from the end of April to the first week in May or so. You'll hit a little bit low on activity, they'll spawn but since they're stocked fish, they won't actually spawn. They're just going to go through the motions of it and actions of it. You'll hit about a week long. You can still catch fish on the local lakes. It gets a little bit tougher for us. The bigger fish that we're wanting and targeting, uh, uh, they're just in a very neutral mode. They're not going to feed. They're not going to eat. You can get some big reaction strikes out of them. Uh, I usually don't fish a whole lot. I, I wait a few weeks. Start watching some message boards or social media or Facebook, and uh, I watch for the guys, the bass fishermen, to start complaining about how these giant muskies are taking their spinner baits and crankbaits off the shorelines. At that time, then I say, well, those big females are done spawning. Uh, they they've recouped from the spawn a little bit, and now they're ready to put the feed bags on and start feeding for the summer. And as the water warms, their metabolism increases. They have to feed more. The colder water period during that spawn, they don't feed a whole lot. So now they've exhumed a lot of energy during the spawn they're beat up. And this is when they feed along with warming water temps. So after they come off spawn, mid-May coming into uh, the first part of June, now these fish are going to relocate. They're going to migrate. And I don't care if you're in a 500 acre lake or a 1,000 acre lake or a 3,000 acre lake. These fish have seasonal migrations, understanding of the timing of when and where and why is more important than what color bait, what size bait, and so on and so forth. But from this time frame, from mid-May through June, I'm going to pick the next area in the lake, the central location of the lake, no matter what it is. It's usually your next area in the lake that's the next deepest water that has a lot of mid-lake structure. There's still some deep water and some shallow water adjacent to the water that they were in early spring spawning and doing their feeding. Uh, my local, my, my, my top lake is West Bridge. That lake runs east and west. I separate that lake every year in three sections. You have the west end, there's a bridge that splits the lake down the middle. Anything west of that, that's the west end of the lake, that's what we target in spring. I won't leave that until about the second, third week in May. Then from there, I go from the east end, from the east side of the bridge, to about three quarters of the way down the lake. That's my midsection of the lake right there. That's gonna, the, the water temps gonna be a degree or two cooler, but as those fish, the water warms on that west end, they're gonna start going east, now they're looking for more cooler water. They're thinking about maybe moving off, off to some offshore structure, and they're going to start going just a little bit deeper. And now you have emerging weed beds now. April and May, your weeds are, you know, a foot to 18 inches off the bottom. Now they're gonna start getting a little bit closer to the surface. They're gonna get fuller and thicker and denser. Now the bait fish are gonna start going into the weeds. They're gonna leave the west end and the shallow ends of the lakes, just as the other predatory fish did. In this central area of the lake, whether it's Leesville, West Branch, Milton, Piedmont, Salt Fork, always look at the next closest area to the shallow water once again. Now I'm gonna pick some deeper points, weed lines, uh, there's a, uh, uh, shorelines with, with logs on them are a good starting point as well. Like I said, the bass guys are always going to tell you where these fish are located at because they're ripping their crankbaits off and spinnerbaits and, and, and chatterbaits. I'll go bass fish these muskies. 
with some larger bass or small musky baits. And it usually works out really, really well. And those, those bigger females, they're wanting something close to the, to the shad size that are swimming around the lake at that time, for two to four or five inches even. I have a couple areas I won't leave within sight of one section of the lake. If the fish are there, the fish are there. You don't have to go down to the deepest part of the lake at that time. Uh, I won't vacate the mid-depth lake structures until mid-June to the end of July, or mid-June to the end of June. Now I'm going to go to my deepest water, which on any lake is closest to the dam, as we all know. Now when I get in the last section of that lake down there, now I'm getting into the deepest part of the river channels. And you're talking 30, 40, 50 foot deep in a particular lake. I'm going to look for a structure that is adjacent to that river channel. Whether it's a long point, a break line, a flat, a weed edge, it doesn't matter. Anywhere where I can find good structure next to those river channels or adjacent to it, I'm going to target those areas first. Those fish will travel through those river channels as they migrate to the deeper parts of the lake later in the summer when the water temps warm. Uh, the river channel will serve, if you can find a point on a lake that dumps right into the river channel, that's just a funnel. It's like with deer hunting. The deer find small, condensed areas that they can funnel through to go travel back and forth from, uh, from bedding and food. The fish will do the exact same thing. They're going to find a spot that dumps the river channel and goes back up into shallow water where they can travel back and forth on that and feed. The biggest points on your lake, uh, inside turns or even outside turns of that river channel. Look at those areas, the shorelines, uh, riprap, structure, anything right next to that. If your river channel is coming straight down the center of the lake and it curves to the right and it cuts right next to a shoreline, that's going to be really steep drop off next to the river channel and the shoreline. That's going to be a good spot to look for as well. You may find some more weeds there, uh, logs, cover, rocks. Those will hold some of your bigger females. During this time, I'm going to be throwing some, some bigger rubber baits, medusas, bulldogs. Uh, we may throw some tubes. We may jig, uh, vertical jig form with bondy baits. And also, uh, uh, trolling is a very, very popular method. to cover a ton of water with trolling. Now we're going to get into, and, and in this time frame, it's going to be anywhere from June through mid to end of July and even into August. So now we're getting into August. There's fish all through the entire lake now. There's fish on that shallow end. They're in the, the mid-depth structure of the lake. Now they're at the extreme deep end of the lake as well. These fish are located, there's fish everywhere. At the end of August, the water temperatures start cooling down. You'll have decreased daylight, you'll get a couple of cold fronts, some cloudy days, and water temps will drop two, three, four, five degrees. Now your shad that spawned in the spring, all the fry have hatched, and they're going to go up into the shallow water as it cools. They're going to get into the weed beds, your creek arms, uh, some of your shallower uh, uh, gravel flats even. Those predatory fish will follow directly behind them. When you get on your local lakes and you can get in the shallow water, you see pods of bait fish, schools of them like that, and there's a thousand little fish and there's probably millions that big. Those are the shad fry that have spawned from this previous spring and they're coming out of the deeper water where they were hatched from and going up in the shallows and the predatory fish fall. Now I'm going to start looking. I'm not going to focus on one particular section of the lake. I'm going to start running a gun in now. I'm going to take baits that I can cover a lot of a, a, a lot of water with fast, whether it be a spinner bait, a crankbait on a weed edge, or trolling uh, a bucktail. And I'm going to cover lots of spots very fast. Uh, I have a guy in the front of the boat throwing a bucktail, and I have a guy in the boat throwing a crankbait. Uh, and we can switch back and forth to even a jerkbait or uh, a rubber bait, a medusa or a bulldog. We're going to cover these spots with no particular method other than trying to find fish find the active fish and figure out what colors, what sizes, and what bait they're going to want. Once we can establish what they're wanting, now we can go back and say, hey, we hit that weed bed over there. Uh, we were up in the weeds in 10 foot of water adjacent to some deeper drop-offs around. What else in the lake is going to match that same similar scenario? 
brainstorm for a few minutes, look at a map, think about your spots, and go duplicate the same spot where you had your first few fish after that. And keep repeating that. If the fish are still responding, don't stop doing that until obviously the fish may leave again coming into September. Uh, the crankbait bite at the end of August and the first of September is very, very good. I don't throw a ton of bucktails uh, on my home lakes until about the second to third week in September. It gets really, really good. Uh, there's some other lakes, uh, Piedmont Lake, uh, even Leesville. Those lakes are a little bit further south and they fish a little bit differently. The end of August, uh, those lakes have a lot of lily pads. My home lake has no lily pads. In it. It's all weeds and deeper structure. And the fish tend to stay deeper whereas they have some shallow cover in the lily pads. And you'll find 48 to 50 inch fish in six to 10 foot of water underneath the lily pads. And there's six in the lily pads that are three times the size of this room here and there's shade on them at all times of the day. And the fish, the bait fish will stay in there and you can go in there uh, early in the morning, low light conditions, or late in the evening, low light conditions as well, and take your spinner baits, rubber crankbaits, jerkbaits, and those fish will stick their noses out on the edges of those lily pads and you can catch them. Uh, middle of the day, from the sun bearing down overhead, they're gonna kick back in and bury themselves in there. Go find some deeper fish and some deeper water. And you will have some of those fish that will lay adjacent to that, shallow, those shallow weeds and or lily pads. And they're gonna kick out, they're gonna suspend in open water eight or 10 foot down. Though light resumes early, late, they'll kick back in those pads and go ahead and start feeding again. Uh, now I'm going to look into, now I've, I've covered up through about the end of August and the first of September. Now I'm going to look at September through October. And this is a very, very tricky time. Now I'm picking up my blade baits. I'm fishing very fast, I'm fishing very aggressive, I'm covering even more water now. And I'm not going to double back on too many spots. I'm going to take one big spot and I'm going to make six to ten casts with one bait. If a fish doesn't show itself by either catching it or raising it, I'm going to switch again. I have a guy in the back of the boat doing the same thing. And I may throw a smaller bucktail and I'll have him throw a bigger blade. And we just keep swapping out. There's, there's no exact science to it. I went up there for three or four or five days in a row and at every spot they want a different color and a different size blade. You just don't get set in throwing one color the entire day because you caught a fish on it four years ago. These, these fish are, are are, are very hard to please at times in the fall like this. I've caught, we've caught, we've had eight fish days and caught them on six different colors and six different sizes of bucktails. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, just gotta let the fish know, have the fish tell you what they want. And as soon as they do that, I'm gonna stick with those colors and those size blades for a while. And then once you get that, that hot bite and that, that hot pattern, they're gonna stick with that for a few more weeks. They're going to switch usually to a bigger blade at this time. Now we're getting into the end of September and the first of October. I'm going to start running some bigger double eights, double tens. I have another one called a mega blade. There, uh, the blades are probably about three and a half inches long, uh, and, they're, and they're a little bit bigger profile and give a different thump to them. I'm going to throw those for a while, and then again I'm going to look at my my spinner baits and even buzz baits. Now I'm getting in the top one, still covering a ton of water very fast, and I'm looking for three or four, five, six spots that have been continually uh, good for me over the, over the last course of, of the last three to four weeks. And the fish usually, once you find a good spots and good weed beds, they don't leave that for the fall. And you can go back to spots over and over and over. You can even hit them two or three or four times in one day and catch different fish or get reactions, raise different fish every time you go in. So if you go to a spot one time and catch a fish, don't leave that come back multiple times throughout the day and you're gonna have different fish moving and out. But don't get set on, on, on one or two particular baits. If, uh, if we're having a rough day figuring patterns, I might throw 20 baits on one spot. And that's making six bait casts and swapping things out and getting things going and getting aggressive with it, figuring out what they want. Now into mid-October, my water temps are getting down 60, 65 degrees. Now you have to deal with turnover. Turnover, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with turnover time. What the lake does, in the summertime, once water temps get to a certain temperature, they'll warm up, you'll get a section in the center of the lake. 
where it will, it's called stratification. It will stratify, okay? That is the deepest part of that lake in that water column where it's gonna have the highest amount of oxygen content before you go down below that. And that's called a thermocline. Those fish usually stay at the thermocline and above. So your warmer water will be at the top, your colder water will be at the bottom. During turnover time, when those surface temps get real close to the same temperature as that thermocline and below, now that lake's going to actually do, it's gonna turn over and flip. Now you'll notice a change in the water color. The water temperatures will, will vary a little bit too. The water, Leesville's probably one of the worst ones. Leesville gets a brackish, almost a burgundy, like a brown black color. It gets ugly, it stinks, because everything from the bottom is going to the top now, and now you have a lot of floating debris and the water kind of smells a little bit of an odor to it. And you can go to certain spots, usually your, your, your mid, mid section of the lake is going to turn over first current and wind, and, and there's a lot of variables that come into play. Uh, you can seek out shallow water. If your shallow water is not deep enough to develop a thermocline, in theory, it's not really going to turn over. But some of that water that's turned over can work into some of the, the mouths of the bays and the cuts and still mix with it. At this time, when during the turnover, now if you have surface temps of 62 degrees, if it's 35 foot deep, that's now 62 degrees. The water temperature is the same temp from the surface all the way down to the, to the bottom through the whole water column. The fish don't shut down at this time, but it becomes very, very tough. Not too often over the years have I actually went into water that's turning over and actually done good and had a consistent pattern to catch fish all the time. Once again, though, I'm going to cut back into some of the, the deeper bays shallow water is not going to turn over. If you, can, you can find a separation from the turnover, the water that's turning over, to the water that's not. At, at that time, I'm going to just keep going in the back of that, back of that bay or that cut, that section of the lake, and I'm going to fish that cleaner, clearer water, and there's nine times out of 10 active fish back there. So now, if you found a spot that's like that, you can look at other spots in your lake and go match that and find clean and clear water and do the same exact thing. Turnover, usually the shallower end can sometimes turn over fast, faster. As the wind and the current blows all that water down and that water cools from uh, shallow to deep, now the deepest part of your lake is going to turn over last. And this isn't set stone. The water does what it wants to. Uh, I've seen it where it's been off in some years. So if my shallower end of the lake has turned over faster and now it's working itself to the other end of the lake, the deeper water. I'm going to fish the deeper end of my lake that hasn't turned over as long as I can until it does turn over. And when that starts, I'm going to double back and I'm going to go to my shallower end of the lake. And that should be mid turnover, if not already done, it may not even be turning over. So now I'm going to go back to the shallower water. Once it's done turning over and it stabilizes, you'll have anywhere from five to 10 degree water temperature difference from the water that's just starting to turn over to the water that is already turned over. And you have to really look at water color, water temperature, uh, and, and see where the fish are. And if those water temps drop drastically after a turnover to your surface, you can go back there, look for the balls of bait, and find some fish. Now, the way the water's setting itself up and the lakes are setting up, you're going up back to almost a, a, a springtime situation where the water's cool now, but your shallower end of the lake is still warmer than some of the other sections. And your bait fish will return, and those muskie and walleye and, and bass will return to those same spots as well. Uh, I usually start actually deer hunting at that time. I vacate the lakes during turnover, let that sort itself out, and once those water temps get in the, back down to the 50s, the lakes will stabilize, and they'll get real nice and clear. Now I'm getting into November, December. There's no, now the water temps the same surface all the way down the bottom. You can go back in bays, shallow ends, and the water will get a degree or two warmer. But now, all I want to do is I want to drive around. I'm not going to structure fish a whole lot, as I did through April, May, June, July, and August. I'm looking for pods of bait fish. And it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the lake, if it's in the back of a bay, if it's over a river channel, or a break line, or a point. Drive around, look at the pods of the bait, look outside them, in the middle of them. If you've got muskies located within those areas, those are feeding fish. 
If you find a pot of bait fish and you have some big marks in your graph that may be muskies, 25 foot down with their belly smashed at the bottom, most of the time those are not active feeding fish. Uh, anytime a fish lay on the bottom on structure or even below bait, they're usually not very active. At this time, I'm going to leave those fish and I'm going to look for fish that are suspended that are higher in the water column, closer to the bait. That tells me that they're active and they're in a, a feeding period for themselves. And I, and I'll go through and we're going to we're going to throw a uh, big rubber now. You can throw crank baits even in the middle. There's some guys they like to throw uh, glide baits and jerk baits. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you're over 30 feet of water. You're just fishing pods of bait. That's it. Most of the time, the bait's going to be sitting higher in the water column because the water could be a degree or two warmer at the surface. And from uh, November all the way through December, even into January, you're just driving around the lake looking for bait. And there's a, there's a handful of diehards that love this time period because uh, they can catch an awful lot of fish by fishing the bait. You'll have the largest concentration of these schools of these muskies at this time over any other time of the year. Uh, Guys can have 10, 15, 20 fish days at this time. And it doesn't matter if you're if you're running your rubber and you're, or you're casting jerk baits and other stuff into the bait and casting them, that doesn't work for you, pick a rod up and start trolling. Uh, start your start your trolling speeds at two and a half miles an hour. Run the bait five, six, seven foot down. If that doesn't work, drop it down a little more. Once again though, let the fish tell you what they want. And if they're high in the water column in the bait fish, they're going to respond and let you know what they want fairly fast. Um, New Year's Day, I was able to get out and fish with a friend. Uh, we fished the bait fish. Uh, we did some, some vertical jigging. We actually even snagged some shad and hung them on, on uh, live bait rigs and set them up. They wouldn't touch them. Vertically jigging, we hooked a couple fish and we left the bait fish. We couldn't get anything to go. We done it for four hours. We ran several different styles, types of baits, depths, and they weren't they weren't cooperating. So we left that. We actually structure fished. I've never structured fished in the dead of winter. Uh, we start seeing a few fish, found a little bit of bait, hit some key uh, some some key deeper spots that we typically summertime fish when they're laying on the bottom. And we were actually we raised the fish, and I was able to get a 45 inch New Year's Day uh, on a on a husky Medusa, big heavy bait, lots of hang time for the cold water. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to fish the bait, but that's a good starting point. If that doesn't work for you, go back to some of your spots you like to cover during the uh, late summer or even early winter, where they may be laying on the bottom in 10 to 25 foot of water. Uh, and then it's just a vicious cycle. We have to go through and figure this out every single year. And it may duplicate, the patterns may duplicate themselves, spring, summer, and fall. In some years, they're so far off and it's on the opposite side of the spectrum and you're so confused for the first two weeks and then you pick something up that doesn't make sense, a bigger bait, uh, a smaller bait, and they start hitting them again. So the patterns are, it's, it's pretty cookie cutter every year. But looking at your water temps, uh, the time of the year is a good starting point too. Putting all that together and saying, okay, shallow end of the lake, mid-depth lake, set the deepest part of the lake. And you go shallow first thing, and the later the year goes, you go back to the deeper part of the lake. Now, once you get back into late summer, early fall, now they're going to start going back. As the water gets cold again, and uh, you get closer to winter time, now they're back in shallow, and they could be deep too. So, uh, I think I'm going to finish up with that. But if you guys have any questions at all, uh, let me know, and I'll answer a few questions right now. If not, I'm going to finish up with this. Nothing? So you you said West Branch is your home lake? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get around a little bit, but West Branch is so close to the house. I'll, I'll, I'll do Lake Milton some, uh, and we get to Leesville once in a while. I want to do Piedmont more. Uh, that's about 95 miles of my way down. So you, I know how you, you explain how you break West Branch up. How do you break Milton up? Milton up? Uh, that can't be broken up. Okay. <laughs> you go where the fish are at. But I mean, you know what? It's that's a, that's an odd, funny lake. I'm not the biggest fan. I like fishing it. I, I have a strong desire to learn more about it. And I can go there and catch fish. It's not like me going to West Branch, and it's just routine for me. Uh, 
A lot of guys vacate that north end, obviously, because of your river channel. What dumps out of Berlin dumps into that river channel. And that's, that time, the largest concentration of muskies in the lake. It's the best time for that river channel to be productive, like West Branch can be, is when they're dumping, when there's a certain amount of outflow out of Berlin. When that water, they're dumping that water from Berlin, is it what, 30 foot down as the discharge? That cold water dumps out of Berlin and fills into that river channel. And that'll go all the way out to the mouth of the river channel, the south of the lake. And you'll have 10 degree water temperature difference at that time. Uh, the bait will show up in there, and those muskies show up behind them. And that's usually August, September. It, it varies from year to year. I've seen it in July before. You have to check their Army Corps of Engineers website to see when they're letting out a certain amount of outflow and see how much they're dumping out. And, and I, I think it's 2,000 or 3,000 cubic feet per minute they dump out of it. Is there's certain numbers guys look for when they fish that. Uh, I don't do that. I just go fishing, you know. Uh, I'll run the river channel for a couple hours, several different stuff, kinds of baits. If that doesn't work for me, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hit the flats in the, at the mountain. And Really, that, that lake gets good about June. And then May 1st of June, them guys really start going there fishing the flats and the river channel. I like going north some. Uh, I did a couple guide trips with customers. We hooked some smaller fish. There wasn't a whole lot going on in that river channel. It was uh, at the end of June. Water temps were super warm. They were dumping no water from Berlin. And we went north and trolled the river channel, and I was trolling uh, eight inch tough shads and, uh, and uh, legend perch baits and running from 12 to 14 foot deep over the river channel, which is 21 foot deep through their summer pool, and we got into fish right away. And I vacated that south end and just stayed north the rest of the year. And them guys caught a bunch of fish at the north end. People have thought for years, well, you can't go to the north end and catch fish. Oh, it's impossible. We can't do it. Why is it so hard? They're there. Where does everybody go? They go to the south end. They go to the river channel. That's where they catch the most fish at because that's where they're fishing the most. Last year, for the first time in a long time, a, a group of guys went north. They were fairly successful early part of the day doing what they were doing, and they stuck with it. And uh, they caught 15, 20 fish in a day up there between a group of them. Uh, now we worked together in a good pattern. It was just running eight, 10 inch baits, fire tiger, first colors. Nothing out of the ordinary from any other lake in Ohio. Uh, they just actually went and did it. They did it north of the lake, and the muskies were there. But they're dumping more and more muskies. I mean, they're still dumping uh, one fish per acre. Uh, one time a year on that lake, it's starting to pick up a little bit. There's a lot of 30, 32 inches in there. Uh, that lake's going to be uh, uh, pretty good in the next few years, but I think there still is a fair amount of them that do leave uh, through the gate of the dam and end up in the Mahoney River itself. But uh, no, that's a. I, I would say early in the year, there's fish through that entire lake. And the warmer those water temps get, those fish tend to go south if they're letting any water out of Berlin. Those fish fluctuate. Those guys have been in there uh, uh, July, and they let water in Berlin, and water the river channel cools down. Those fish sense that, and they go right back up in there. They'll shut the gates down in Berlin, and then those, those fish will go right back up to the north end where there's a little bit of a, a thermocline development that's full of water. So, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't per se that you could, you, could, you could categorize that lake by the times of the year. It's all about water temps and flow from Berlin through Milton, is what I would look at more so than anything. Uh, but I can't tell you how many bass guys I, I, I talk to that say, yeah, we're up here in the river, I'm flipping the dock, and it no not matter if it's March, April, or, or September. We always catch fish up there doing that. And I'm looking for a nicer fish, but these guys are catching the advantage finger lengths I've been stocked in the last two years. So there's always fish in that river channel. That'd be a good starting point, no matter what time of the year you start there at that lake if you're unfamiliar with it. But don't be afraid to go to north. You're going to have a lot of your nice and bigger fish that'll, that'll still suspend uh, in that lake just like any other lake, whether it be West Branch or Leesville or Piedmont or so forth, you know. So, uh, any other questions I can answer at all? All right, guys, I'm going to finish up. Thanks for coming over. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, you can stop by the booth over there.